You know, the fear of failure in your life can be one of the most paralyzing things you could ever face. I'm going to jump right into that and give you a proven strategy for conquering that fear of failure here today on God's Plan for Living. Well, hey, my friend, so glad that you are with me here today on God's Plan for Living. Listen, I don't know about you, but if you've ever dealt with the fear of failure and all the the baggage that that can bring in your life, it is absolutely debilitating, or it can be. I can remember for years and years and years in my life having this fear of not being good enough. For me, that fear of failure kind of you know manifested in my life as perfectionism, and so I was always making sure that the way I looked and the way I dressed and the way I, I talked to people and was perceived and the, what people thought about me and the things that I would say and the things that I would do, even the things that I would be willing to try and not try, all of that manifested in this sort of perfectionistic tendency to make sure everything was perfect. Why? So that I wouldn't fail. Because I had this belief in my mind that if I failed, somehow that would be the end of everything. I think a lot of times when when we have these uh, mirages that come up in our mind of, of fear, you know, a lot of times we don't even know what it's about. We don't even take it to the natural end. We just think, I can't even think about it. It's just so horrible. It's destroying me. It's There's no way that I can go toward that edge. I've got to make it right. It's got to be perfect or I've got to, you know, uh, push it off or I've just not, I've just got to stay right here in my safe space. And fear of failure can be something that is absolutely debilitating. I remember in my own life, uh, when I began to see really progress being made uh, in my ability to walk uh, in faith and, and walk free of the fear of failure, it really happened as I started to develop my identity in Christ and establish that according to God's word, as opposed to basing everything that I was doing on my feelings, because listen, there are a lot of people, Christians or not, (laughs) that you may love Jesus with all your heart, but you've not learned how to renew your mind. And so you continue to walk in this fear-based living over and over and over again. And it keeps you in a place that God never, ever intended for you to be, because it keeps you focused on your inadequacies as opposed to God's promises and God's intention for your life. Listen, frustration grows in your heart anytime you allow your fears and worries and all that kind of stuff to be bigger than the promises of God in your life. And so that's what we're going to kind of dive into today, some of the ways that that fear of failure manifests itself and also a proven strategy that I know is going to help you begin to get free of this fear of failure so that you can walk in everything that God has for you. Now, you may know uh, if you're new to me, uh, you know, listening to me or whatever, uh, or if you know me for a long time, you know, I've had the privilege of, of mentoring and walking with people for a lot of years. I've seen a lot of people uh, come from, you know, struggling to really thriving and everything that God's called them to do. And I've seen this whole fear of failure and inadequacy thing uh, be a root in so many people's lives that keeps them from everything that God's got for them. And as I look at, you know, sort of how this fear of failure manifests itself, there's really three different ways that fear of failure can manifest itself in people's life. The first way I would say is uh, procrastination. And this is insidious because it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's just this sort of thing that, well, I I don't want to do this. I don't want to fail at this. I don't want to look bad. I don't want to seem weak. I don't want to seem like I don't have it all together. So I just keep pushing that thing off. And what procrastination does is it just keeps the decision as opposed to happening today. I'm going to do this. I'm going to step forward in faith. We just keep pushing it off, right? We just keep pushing it off and we make excuses in our mind, right? We can make all kinds of excuses for, oh, I've got this going on, or this is not a priority right now, or you can over-spiritualize it and say, oh, it's just not the right season, you know, or whatever. But if we're really true to ourselves. If we really listen to the voice of the Lord, many times those procrastinating tendencies at the root are really just a fear of failure. You just don't want to look like you don't have it all together. You don't want to be found inadequate or wanting by other people uh, that may be looking. Maybe you don't want to be found inadequate by the Lord. Maybe you don't be found inadequate by yourself. Whatever that, that looks like, there's that fear of if they really knew me, 
if they see that I can't perform in this situation, then I'm not going to be found enough. And usually what that ends in is a fear ultimately of rejection and being alone. And see, that is always the fear of the enemy that he's trying to throw into us, right? He's trying to plant those seeds in your mind. And so procrastination, although it seems, oh, I'm just kind of a, I'm just a creative or I'm just this, or that's just kind of the way I am, or I'm not really that organized. If you dig deeper, procrastination usually has um, some pretty insidious roots that, <laughs> that are getting, getting really deep uh, into us. The second way then I would say that I've seen, uh, you know, this fear of failure really come up in people's lives and manifest is in this idea of perfectionism. Now that's kind of how it happened for me. I didn't necessarily push things off. I just went overboard OCD on making sure everything was managed perfectly or in my eyes perfectly so that I wouldn't be found wanting. And listen, that is uh, a lot of times even worse than procrastination because you're in this constant performance mentality all the time trying to manage the way you are perceived by others, the way you're presenting yourself, the way you're speaking and dressing and, and looking and, and working and all, all the stuff of, of life. But at, at the bottom of it is not a desire for excellence. The bottom of it is, is not a desire necessarily to, to please the Lord. Also, although sometimes we kind of, you know, try to fool ourselves with that. The bottom of it is, I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to look bad. I don't want to be found out as wanting, as inadequate. I don't want to be pushed away and rejected by others. So I'm going to get on this treadmill of performance and do whatever I got to do to make sure that people don't see me in that way. And again, that is no way to live. The third way that happens then, so you got procrastination, then you know, you've got this whole idea of perfectionism. The third way that I see people, uh, it affects people a lot of times is, is paralysis. You just get paralyzed in, in, in feeling like there's no way that if I step out into this, into this direction right now that it's going to work out good. Uh, I'm going to be a failure. I, I'm not able to do it. I don't have what it takes. I feel like there's something inherently wrong with me, and uh, I don't see God showing up in this. I'm left out on my own. I'm just going to freeze because that's the safest thing to do. I think about the guy in, uh, you know, the parable of the talents in, in Matthew 25, the end of that chapter where it's, you know, talking about how, you know, he gave the three guys uh, some talents, which was a, a big sum of money. And the third guy, instead of investing that and doubling his money like the other two guys did, what did he do? He took that money and he hid it in the ground and he waited for the master of the field, Jesus in the story, to come back. And he said, what? I knew you to be a hard man. You know, in, 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 in other words, I knew that I couldn't measure up to what you'd asked me to do. So I hid it. I just got, I just got paralyzed. I hid it so I wouldn't get in trouble. Now here it is. And so that is no way to live. And again, is it the ploy of the enemy to get you either striving on your own, pushing things off that God has for you for now, pushing them off to later, or either just being paralyzed? Absolutely. That's the ploy of the enemy. In fact, I want to look in first, uh, Second Timothy, actually, chapter 1, verse 7. This, you, you may know this scripture. It, this, is, this is Paul talking. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Now, just think about that. If he says God has not given us a spirit of fear, well, well somebody gave it to us. We didn't just come up with it on our own, right? Who gave us the spirit of fear? Who's trying to give us? the spirit of fear, the enemy, of course, right? He's always tempting you and always will be tempting you with the spirit of fear. Why? So that you come out of alignment with the power and the love and the sound mind that God has given you. So realize in this trying to conquer the fear of failure, realize you always have a choice. Am I going to choose to receive the spirit of fear that the enemy is trying to give me? Or am I going to choose to receive power and love and a sound mind from the Lord? What does that mean, power, love, and a sound mind? Power means what? In Christ, I have the power to do the things that God has called me to do. I don't have to be afraid. 
I don't have to be worried about failure. I don't have to be worried if, 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 that my actions don't measure up to some some fantastical view of what perfection uh, you know is and what I'm imagining it has to be like. No, I have the power in Christ to do everything that he's giving me the opportunity and the authority to walk in. So my job is not to worry about, am I inadequate? Am I afraid? Am I, am I not able to do this? My job is to say, thank you, Lord, that you have designed me and assigned me for this time and this assignment in my life. And I'm going to step forward in faith, believing that it's not by my power or not by my might, but it's by what? By your spirit that I'm going to be able to accomplish everything in my life. That's huge. So he's given us power. He's given us love. What does love have to do with this? What's love? I know. Just, just think of this. What does love have to do with it? Love has to do with everything because, listen, if you are not fully persuaded in your heart that you are loved by God unconditionally, if you're not fully persuaded in your heart that, that you can love yourself with the love of God, then there's no way that you're going to be able to walk in power and sound mind, and freedom, and boldness, and faith that God's got for you. Why? Because you're always going to be either doubting the love of God, doubting the love of others, and trying to prove yourself to other people through your actions. Listen, the supernatural love of God will set you free from performance. The supernatural love of God will set you free from striving. Why? Because you're no longer basing your identity on what you do but on who you are in Christ. That's huge. That's a game changer. And then number three in this verse, he says he's given us us a spirit of power and of love and what? A sound mind. One of the things that the spirit of fear that the enemy is trying to get you to come into agreement with, one of the things that he does is he brings confusion. He brings instability. He brings double-mindedness. He brings this constant ping pong match of back and forth this or that should I do it should I not I don't know what to do can I do it I'm not good enough I'm not this enough I'm not that enough it's this constant thing that generates anxiety and fear and worry in your heart and listen you will be unstable in all your ways the book of James says if you're double-minded and so what power and love do when your identity is set in the Lord It allows you to be firm in who God says you are, what you can do, what you can have, not according to your feelings, but what? According to his word. And that gets you out of this game of constant performance and striving and anxiousness. And it fulfills the promise here that that God has given you power and love and a sound mind. There's stability when you're rooted and grounded in the love of God, there's stability when your identity is rooted and grounded in who God says you are in his word, not just based on your feelings. So realize anytime the enemy is coming at you with this fear of failure, he's, he's, he's IMAXing this movie on the screen of your mind and on your heart, and he's trying to convince you that that movie that he's playing is more real than the word of God that he's spoken in his word, his written word, and in the the words that he's spoken into your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so guess what? You have to make a choice. You got to make a choice. In fact, the Bible says what? We got to take every thought captive. So if you're going to conquer the fear of failure in your life, you got to realize you cannot just be walking along, flowing along, going with the flow. I feel this way. I feel that way. No. What does God's word say? Because when we come into alignment with the truth of God's word, the fruit of God's word will begin to manifest in and through our life. And when you are in agreement with, with the truth of, of uh, you know, the, the spirit of fear and all that, all that the spirit of fear is saying is true, then guess what? The fruit of the spirit of fear is going to manifest in your life, which is what? Worry and anxiety and rejection and inadequacy and all the junk that none of us want. See, when you are walking in power and love and a sound mind, when you're walking by faith, there is a manifestation of life that God has for us that has nothing to do with anxiety and fear and rejection. What does it look like? Well, let's look. 
All right. If you look over here in Galatians 5, I love this in Galatians 5 is actually in verses. Um, let's see, verses 22, 23. This is the fruit of the spirit. You know this. And it says, but the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long suffering or patience kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. In other words, what? When you are in agreement with the Spirit of God, when you're in agreement with what God's Word says, the fruit of the Spirit living in you and working in you and fully persuading your heart that this is more true than all the other junk that the spirit of fear is trying to throw in your life. Guess what? These things are or what's going to manifest. You may be you may be wondering in your life, how do I get more peace? How do I get more joy? How can I be more patient? How can I be more kind and good and faithful in my life? How can I be more self-controlled? The spirit of fear will tell you that you got to strive for all that. You just got to white knuckle it or religion will tell you that you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to follow these rules. But no, what do we do? The fruit of the spirit comes as we are connected with the vine. John 15, right? I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. But connected to me, you're going to do what? You're going to bear much fruit. What fruit? The fruit of the Spirit. And so fear of failure and conquering fear of failure is not even about conquering the fear of failure and going after it like, I'm going to conquer the fear of failure. The, the conquering fear of failure is the natural fruit of establishing your identity in Christ and coming into agreement with the Spirit of God intentionally according to His Word as led by the Spirit so that your life can begin to naturally manifest the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Some of that fruit is boldness and walking by faith and not having to walk in fear and, uh, and anxiety and all that sort of thing. I, that is huge. That is huge. Now, What's the strategy? Is there a strategy? Well, I want to give you five things. I call this the five R's, and it is a strategy that I've used for years. I've taught for years to ha help people renew their mind to the truth of God's Word. So let's just imagine a situation, right? The enemy, the spirit of fear is throwing up a movie, IMAXing on the screen of your mind. You're getting freaked out. You've got a choice at this point, right? Am I going to go with this? And, and go down the, you know, the spiral here, go down the toilet of, of just like, ah, this is going to be horrible. Or am I going to choose to go down the road of faith? Well, how do you do that? Number one, five R's. Number one is recognize. Recognize. Does this sound like my daddy or not? Does this sound like the truth of God's word or not? Does this sound like something that God would be leading me into? Or am I feeling chided and and, uh, you know, am I feeling anxious about this? Am I feeling accused? All right. You have to get to where you understand, is this God or is it not? How do you do that? Well, spending time with the Lord, knowing what his word says, knowing what his voice sounds like in your own heart. That's how you begin to know what the spirit of God sounds like. And you recognize, you say, ah, is this the enemy or is this the truth? And in that moment, you've got a choice. You can either connect with it or disconnect with it. Now, number two is repent. And what repent means in the New Testament is this idea of, of turning around, going the other way. But it also means to change your mind, to change your thinking. In other words, I was thinking that this was my only option. I was thinking that this was my reality. The enemy was trying to get me to believe that this was really the truth. But I'm going to have a, a, a change right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the way I was going and go the other way in alignment with what? The truth of God's word. I'm going to come out of agreement with a lie and into agreement with the truth. Number three, then, reinforce. This is a great opportunity. Anytime that you are in a place where the enemy is attacking you, you're feeling things and seeing things and imagining things that you know, according to God's word, have nothing to do with God's best for your life and his divine will for your life. In that moment, it's a great opportunity to say, I'm coming out of agreement with that. I'm turning. I'm changing my mind. I'm walking toward you. Lord, what do you say is the truth about me in this situation? 
What do you say, Lord, is the truth that I need to be connecting with and coming into agreement with based on your word? Now, listen, if, if you know God's word, you can probably go to a scripture. Go to Google. Uh, go to wherever you need to go to. Ask the Spirit of God to speak to you, to give you a truth from his word so that you can begin to reinforce the truth of God's word. Replace that, all right? Replace that. That's actually number three. Replace the lie with the truth. And then number four would be reinforced. That is, every time the enemy comes at you with that old lie, you reinforce the truth. You're not going back to say, oh yeah, I keep getting tripped up by this. Oh, this is the third time this week that I, I keep believing that lie. No, you're recognizing it quicker this time. You can recognize, turn, replace it with the truth of God's word, and then what? Reinforce that truth every time. And then number five is this, rejoice. As a normal part of your time with the Lord, I would encourage you to rejoice in your new normal. See, the whole thing about the spirit of fear and fear of failure and you're not going to be enough and inadequacy and all of that, that whole thing is based on the enemy trying to sell you the lie that this reality that he is presenting to you is the truth. My friend, your reality and my reality as believers in Jesus is not based in what the, what the enemy says. Our reality is based in what? In what the truth of God's word says. And so as a normal part of your daily time with the Lord, you got to begin to rehearse and rejoice over and over. God, thank you that you've not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Thank you, Father, that as I learn to co-labor with your Holy Spirit, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. Thank you, Lord, that those things are going to begin to flow out of my life naturally, not because I'm striving, but because you are producing those in me through agreement with your Spirit. And my friend, guess what? As you begin to do that, your life will change. You will, the enemy will always, listen, the enemy will always be throwing fearful thoughts at you. He'll always be presenting realities, realities that he thinks are, are you know, he's trying to convince you of that are out of alignment with God's word. But you're going to be getting stronger as you use this strategy of the five R's to take every thought captive come out of agreement with a lie, into agreement with the truth, reinforce that, rejoice in that, rehearse that over and, and begin to walk in his rest. Listen, that's God's plan for our life. Or as I've said many times, God's plan for living. <laughs> that, is, that is what it is. It's God's plan that we walk in his power and in his spirit in rest, not in striving and in fear and, in, and especially fear of failure. So my friend, I want to pray right now. And if you have been dealing with the fear of failure, I just believe that there's going to be a breakthrough moment right now for you, uh, that God's going to do some business with you on the inside. And that this is going to be a strategy that if you'll begin to intentionally use in your life, God's going to use it. Listen, this process of conquering the fear of failure and conquering, uh, you know, learning to renew our mind, this is not something that God does to us is something that God does with us. And as you begin to co-labor with him, you're going to be making room for the spirit of God in your life to do incredible, incredible work. So Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. God, I pray for my friend that's found their way to this episode about conquering the fear of failure. Lord, I know that your word says you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would break right now the power of fear in their life. Father, that you would break the power of the fear of failure, of inadequacy, of the lies that the enemy has sown in their heart for so many years. Holy Spirit, would you lead them right now out of the darkness of failure, out of the darkness of fear, out of the darkness of anxiety and lies of inadequacy, and lead them into the light of your truth, the light of of your word. And I just want to ask you right now, friend, as we're praying, just begin to ask the Lord. Just ask him right now. Say, Lord, is there a lie that I've been believing about my own inadequacy, my this fear of failure? Is there just ask him to reveal whatever that lie is? So just ask him right now. Thank you, Lord. 
And as he does that, then I just want to imagine you, I want you to imagine yourself giving him that lie and say, Lord, would you take this lie from me? Would you take the weight and all the baggage, all the extraneous junk, the roots of this thing? Would you take this from me, Lord? I, I give this to you right now in Jesus' name. I don't want it anymore. And just tell him right now as you're praying, say, Lord, I want what you have for me. What truth, what is your truth that you have for me about this situation? I've been believing this. The enemy's trying to sell me this lie. But Lord, what is it you say about this situation? What is it you say about me? What is it you say that my life is about? Just ask him. You may hear a, a still, small voice. You may hear a word. You may see a picture. He may give you a scripture. Whatever it is, listen, just write it down and begin to ask the Lord in your quiet time with him to unfold that truth for you according to his word. Father, we thank you for that, that your Holy Spirit wants to speak to us. You want to lead us into all truth. You want to see us whole and healed and free. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that. Amen. Amen. My friend, I'm so glad that you were here with me today. Listen, we've all been there, this whole thing of, of fear of failure and inadequacy and all that. I've been there. You've been there. But listen, there is absolutely freedom for you in Jesus when you learn to use this strategy that I call the five R's. Do me a favor. If you've used this uh, either today or maybe you've listened to me before and you've been using this strategy, Leave me a, a comment below. Let me know what, it, what was the lie that you were believing, the fear that the enemy was, was bringing up in your mind. And then tell me, what was the truth that the Lord showed you? And so that you, know, so that you can begin, just as a, a matter of declaration of your heart, begin to say, you know what? I'm coming out of agreement with this. I'm going to type this down uh, on the podcast, on YouTube, on wherever it is that, that you're watching this. Write that down as a declaration of faith, Because, you know, the Bible says that we overcome not only by the blood of the Lamb, what Jesus did for us, but the word of our testimony. That is, as you declare out of your mouth what God has done for you, it is part of the overcoming process that God uses in your life to bring freedom. So make sure, tell me, tell somebody, email us if you want to, whatever you want to do, but tell somebody what God is doing in your life in this area to set you free from the fear of failure. I love you, my friend. It's such a privilege to be with you all the time. Please make sure that you're subscribed, that you like, that you comment, do all the stuff. Share it on social media, uh, you know, wherever you're uh, on Instagram or Facebook or wherever uh, you're connecting with others and let them know that, that this episode was a big, big blessing to you. Also, you can check out uh, the, the show notes here. There are lots of resources there. Uh, there are books there. There's, there's uh, free PDFs. There's other videos that you can watch and continue to grow in the Lord in all that he has for you. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again next time right here on God's Plan for Living. Bye.